Um, all right. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this March 3rd meeting of the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee to order. Um, Ms. Barber, roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Here. Here. <clears throat> Adam Lynch. Chris Clark. Here. Jamie Jackson. Jacob Hathaway. Here. Heather LaBelle. Stephen Littlewood. Here. Yamina Jordan. Aaron Frank. John Leisher. Linda Lissett. Here. Joy Himes. Ben Matters. Kristen Talkin Spalding. Lee Anderson is absent. Deborah Fultz. Deborah Lately. Uh, Ms. Lately is remote. She is remote, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Good to know. Rob Maple. Here. Jim Lynch. Here. John Summer. Here. Dan Huey. Brant Brantley Tyndall. All right, thank you. Roll is called. All right, thank you. Moving on to the next agenda item. You're here. Approval. I didn't call you. Hold on. Oh. Craig Pennington is also here, and I didn't call him. <laughs> yeah, we did, Hi, we did miss Craig. <laughs> Um, approval of the March 3rd, 2022 BPAC meeting agenda. Are there any comments on the agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? I motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Right. Approval of the January 20th meeting minutes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes from the last meeting? Mr. Chair, uh, Jacob with Spotsylvania County. Just a couple items uh, for discussion really quickly. On the, um, the little header, I think, Craig, you had already cycled off by <coughs> chair uh, by January 20th, so just a little header there. I think it still says Craig on that. Oh, on the, last, on the meeting minutes? Yeah, and, and then um, actually, Craig, I, I don't think, I think you were missed on the committee members as well. Well, I wasn't there last meeting. I was just working. My daughter had different problems. So it would have gone under the not present. Yeah, and he's not okay. there at all. Yeah, I don't see him. Okay, I need to fix that. Did you get it? Yeah. That's no! That's not good. I'm looking out for you, buddy. I can leave it. Um, and then just uh, two other, two other things. <laughs> two other um, quick things uh, on my on my the statement on page number six, um, the I guess second from last page. It refers to S Power, um, the solar energy facility. Uh, just as a technical thing, it's a mini, it's a small S, large P. Oh. And they all kind of run together, just, Got it. just how it is. And then I, I don't know if I misspoke at the time, but um, the last sentence refers to the Nye River Trail. The segment of trail easement that was actually picked up um, would be replaced with Poe River Trail. Okay. It's actually part of the Pole River Trail. Um, the other ones, Todd's Tavern Spur, Lake Anna Connector Trail, all those easements, um, those are, are still applicable. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on the minutes? Well, there she is. See the lady in the audience. I, I had some um, uh, uh, small, uh, small, 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 You're good. small comments that I had emailed in to Carrie. Yeah. Okay, so she has this. All right. Just minor thing. Almost a phone number. Any other comments? If, if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So Move. I second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to FAMPO administrator report. Mr. Olive. Yes, that's me. I'm from playing on your phone instead of listening to the Well, there we go. We're just going to look at a couple of quick things which you, if you follow the policy committee, you might have seen some of this already. Just look at where we are with CMAC, STBG, the infrastructure bill. It goes by so many different names now, whatever you want to call it, just the infrastructure bill. 
and just a few bits of paper with it. So let's just move on. So we CMAC SCBG, for those of you who don't know, that stands for congestion mitigation and air quality and surface, surface transportation block grant. I just couldn't think what the S was for for a second. Um, those are two funding streams which we use to fund projects in our region, and FAMPA has a role in choosing the projects that should get the funding. So we have a say in what happens in our area. We had a call for projects um, for our, from our jurisdictions. We received three projects. Um, we've done screening calls with the jurisdictions. We've done the initial scoring. We are just finished with um, doing some draft allocations of uh, the funding. HIP stands for Highway Improvement P, P, P. Program. 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 Program, that's it. There we go. And okay. so we've just done some draft allocations, which we're going to be presenting to the TAC. It's just gone out. The agenda's just gone out. Uh, and we'll discuss those at the TAC and make any changes required. And then the recommended allocations will go through our committees to the policy committee for approval um, for this round. Something that I've been watching, none of this has been approved yet, but there are a number of bills in the state legislature to cut taxes, which is a great thing generally, but it has some implications. And one of those is that the amount of state funding available for transportation would then also be cut. And the concern that I have about those bills is that there's no indication as to where the additional funding will be found to make good the transportation programs that are funded through the state, not federal money, through the state. So there are just drafts at this stage in the committees in the state legislature, Virginia legislature. We don't know yet whether they're going to go anywhere. They might all just die in committee and then not get anywhere, but there are two or three bills where um, the intent is to reduce uh, taxes because of the current inflation and because of COVID and because of a bunch of other things. But I'm just concerned that they may cut funding streams to transportation without looking for alternative funding sources for us, which might be a problem in the future. Next one. An infrastructure bill. I've spoken a lot in the past about the fact that we're going to get increased funding, but we're also going to get increased responsibilities, and nobody's talking much about that. And there's three that I want to point out to you. There's a set-aside requirement for um, increasing safe and accessible transportation options. I'm going to read between the lines that that's got to do with the concept of complete streets. We'll talk about that in a second. There's a new requirement for the federal secretary to assist us with modeling and data, which they never did directly before. And there's a new requirement to coordinate housing with transportation through our planning processes. And that's not something we specifically focused on, but we're going to have to focus a little more on that in the future. Next one. So the set aside. There is this new rule in the bill which says that we have to use 2.5% of our PL funds on specified planning activities to increase safe and accessible options for multiple travel modes for people of all ages and abilities. Code for that is complete streets prioritization. And for those of you not familiar with the concept of complete streets, the idea is that all your main roads should have all modes of transportation present, uh, facilitated, if, if I can use that word, which means that you should have spaces for buses. Jamie would be very happy to hear that. There must be facilities for bicycles, and this committee, I think, would be very happy about that, and pedestrians, and people with disabilities, and cars, and buses, and everything else. So the concept of a complete street is that you have all of the modes present. That's the complete streets concept. And we are now going to be required in future to use 2.5% of our PL funds on planning for complete streets. We never had a set aside like that before. We never had this requirement that we have to. Now, it's no longer an option now. Now it's a requirement. So, so 
thankfully, we're already doing a lot of planning for bike paths and for sidewalks and for other things, but it's now a requirement that we can't ignore, and I have to spend effectively, it's 2.5% of about half of our staff salary bill. What are we currently plan spending on that level of planning? If we're already kind of doing it a little bit, is it close to two and a half? No idea, because okay. nobody's ever counted that before. <clears throat> We've never bothered, BDOT's never asked us to explain what percentage of our staff salary bill goes towards, and it's not even all our salary bill, because PL funds is, doesn't cover our entire salary bill, it's a portion. So it's a portion of a portion, mm -hmm. difficult to tell you, mm -hmm. but I don't, uh, it's just something now we're going to have to start counting, which we never had to bother to count before. We've got to make sure we spend at least 2.5% of our money, not our time, our money. It's a bit of a funny calculation, but we'll have to find a way to do that. Next one. What's uh, Ian? A mandatory. I was hoping you were going to tell me that, <laughs> because that funding comes directly from where? VDOT to uh, us. We don't get it from the feds. Yeah. We don't get it from the feds. We get it from VDOT. So I'm assuming that the next round of funding, PL funding we get from VDOT, will then come with instructions. Uh, we're not there yet. I'm just warning us that coming down the line, it's going to get more complicated to manage my staff salaries, because I now have to start counting this at some point that you guys will instruct us. I don't know where the point starts. Next one. I just had a quick question on that. Yes. Um, what all does planning encompass? Is it, uh, can it include um, contractual planning services or even staff time dedicated to planning or does it? Reading through the, the, the document that is available uh, from Federal Highways, it doesn't kind of seem to specify. Okay. But I'm not reading the bill, which is hundreds and hundreds of pages. I'm reading the, the Cliff Notes version that Federal Highways put out. So it's unclear exactly what's included and not included. What is clear is we're going to have to count. Right. And we're going to get an instruction, I hope, when we get the next round of appeal funds, this is how you should count, right? Because somehow we've got to find a way to count. Anyway, it's, I mean, it's good for bikes and pets. You're going to have to focus on it now in every region in the country. You can't just say, oh, well, we do some. Well, how much is some? Here, there's a new requirement for the secretary to. Now, the secretary for transportation, former Mayor Pete, is going to have to do some things for us, provide data to improve the quality of transportation plans, models, and travel demand forecast. So now the feds have to give us some data, which they never had to do before. Now they're required to. And then they have to provide us with a multimodal web-based tool to affect our planning investments and assess conditions. So new tools coming, new support coming, hopefully. They're probably running around trying to develop these things because it's fun to do that. But anyway, that's some assistance we'll be getting. Excellent slide. This one is far more interesting. When I arrived at Sampo, one of the first things I said is, we need to connect land use with transportation. <coughs> Another way of saying that, where is your housing and where are your job opportunities and how do you connect those with transportation, right? That's what I said on day one. Well, now the law requires us to pay attention to that in some detail, and it's given specific things we have to do to link housing and transportation, right? So, we have to, in our policy, look at surface transportation systems that will better connect housing and employment. It's our requirement that we put that in our long-range plan and in our various other plans. It's not an option. We now have to do it. The Secretary has got to give us a list of housing officials that we should consult with. So if you have a list of names of housing officials in your area, you need to consult them when you're planning. So we have to consult. Then we have to develop projects and strategies that will promote consistency between transportation improvements and state and local housing patterns. So we've got to actually plan to connect these things and show evidence that we're planning to connect these things. Affordable housing organizations have to be consulted when we develop a long-range plan. So we've got to not just do here, Mr. Public, and here, stakeholders at FAMPA, and here, the general people out there. Now we've got to locate 
affordable housing organizations and say, here's our plan, please give us your comments. It's a specific group instead of everybody can comment. We have to now specifically find people and organizations. And then finally, we've got to develop a housing coordination plan if we have a transportation management area. We do because Stafford has got a transportation management area as part of the DC TMA. And because we administer the TMA in Stafford, we're going to be required to develop a housing coordination plan. And that's not been a mandate of an MPO before. So we are an MPO, FAMPA, Metropolitan Planning Organization. So now suddenly we have to coordinate, the, or we have to develop a housing coordination plan within our transportation plan. So it's going to have to be some more explanation about that from the feds because we are not going to be empowered to interfere with zoning. We're not going to be empowered to interfere with approving housing developments. But we have to somehow develop a housing coordination plan. I'm guessing the thought here is that when we develop transportation plans and transportation funding, we have to consider and elaborate how the housing is connected to that particular set of transportation interventions. So we're going to build a road. Okay, where are the houses? We've thought about the houses. The houses are over here, and that fits nicely with developing this road, or it doesn't. I think that's what's envisaged here, is that it's a coordination plan, not a housing plan. So we've got to, but, but it's interesting that these items are specified and spelled out in that bill, so we can't kind of just sail along merrily saying, yes, we're worried about housing, and now to specifically show what we're doing about it. So those are interesting changes. So that's specifically for the metro area, or does that reply, is there similar language for rural areas? So you've got to go into it in, in detail, but you see that it refers to MPOs a lot. Mm -hmm. And so metropolitan planning organizations are de facto for urban areas. So I'm guessing it will cover all urban areas within MPOs. So, yeah. But they usually take the whole county. They don't usually describe an urban boundary and say, so for example, Spotsylvania County, not all of it is urban. But because it's a county with significant urban area within an MPO, I guess that for Spotsylvania County, as part of the MPO, we have to have these sorts of plans. Yeah, I'm just thinking, does it apply to me and Craig? Yeah. <laughs> We're not part of the MPO. Uh, I'm guessing not for you. I'm guessing you're you're allowed to avoid that, but for the rest of us, we remember that the instruction is to the MPO, not to the county. So I have to make sure that FAMPO includes this in future. Thank God, in a way, we just finished our long-range transportation plan because otherwise we would have to park it and go back to the drawing board. We will now workshop, I think, through some scenario planning which we will involve the county um, zoning people and, and planning officials that are not transportation planners, but general planners, in a scenario planning exercise to deal with these things. So I, we were planning, I was planning to do that in the next two years anyway, because by the time we get to the next cycle of the long range transportation plan, we needed to do a fresh scenario planning exercise. Well, this gives us a scope for that. What exactly are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about how we link housing and jobs through transportation. How do we do that? And so there's an opportunity for us to do that, and at least that will give us some time. If they give us a deadline, then we might have to go back and edit the long-range plan or put a new section in it, depending on what guidance we get. And I assume we'll get that over the next year. Next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, hold on, hold on. Um, is there an overlap here between what's ha happening at the uh, uh, um, uh, these uh, state level for a multi-use trails initiative? There is apparently going to be established a multi-use trails office under the highway department, uh, and there seems to be a real good Related opportunity to housing. Well, multi-use trails are for active transportation, and, and, and it seems like that's what we're talking about here. And I, so, uh, I'm just asking if there's an opportunity for open <coughs> cooperative 
efforts. I mean, there usually is opportunities for cooperation and overlap. But these three specific things that I pointed out here, the one is for complete streets, so it's focused on streets. The second one is new measures that the Secretary for Transportation has to implement and support us in our planning. And the third one is all connected to housing and how you put housing into your transportation plan. Those are the three kind of major things that I'm seeing in the legislation that we're going to need to add to what we're doing. All, all those which seems to be very congruent with the ideas behind what I just tried. Sure. Um, sure. The, the, only, the only place that there might not be a congruence for us to kind of think about is multi-use trails. Even though they're under the highway department, going to be a whole thing that's going to be under the highway department it does include horses. So that's another little complication for us all to think about. Yeah, that is. I'll leave that to Becky to do as that she's our resident course person. Next one. <coughs> Yay, Fred. The boss of Fred is right here with us, but we're just pointing out to everybody, Fred is gone fare free. And how's it going? Oh, good. Actually, we every day we are seeing actually, I'll say hundreds of more. I think we started with I, I won't even tell you the numbers, but it's literally a significant 20 to 50 percent increase over the past couple of days. Right, in the last few days. That's more than a couple of days. It's weather related because it's not as cold, but you know some routes are experiencing that. Overall, you know it's probably about 20 to about 20 percent, but some routes are experiencing 20 to 50 percent more ridership. Always good news to hear people are using the transit system. Mm -hmm and not feeling pressurized to have to take the car everywhere and providing good accessibility to people who struggle with transportation. So we're really excited about that. Next one. And just to clarify, that's an annual program right now. It's going to be reviewed, I think I was reading. Four, four years. Four years, but reviewed annually. Yeah, so we'll still evaluate the program annually. Uh, we do have a state grant that has a commitment to four years. However, we still need to make sure that we've got that local funding in place. We do have it right now, and it's forecasted, but four years is what you can expect. Awesome. Good. Um, There's just a quick one. We're monitoring the traffic on on the um, I-95 as these new bridges are <coughs> to see uh, one of the areas of interest of Tampa staff is how much of the traffic on the I-95 is local and how much of it is passing through, because that affects what we plan for the future, right? <clears throat> and so we're watching that, and it looks like there's a higher percentage of traffic that is passing through than traffic that is local. But we'll have to wait and see. No one's got exact counts. We did, we use streetlights to do counts uh, that gives us an idea, but now we have to see whether in practice, once these various bridges and lanes open, whether that's what's happening in practice. Uh, we've got this side open, that bridge. Do you remember when the deadline is for the next bridge to open? No. Probably a year from now. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then we'll check whether that in practice is what's happening because it'll affect how we plan our roads that lead to the 95, et cetera. Next one. Ian, hold on. Yep. Um, um, for this um, the, the purpose here, how are the how are they uh, uh, da, da, de <laughs> finding through and local? Well, with this highway system, we don't have to define it because we're lucky. There's a concrete wall in between, mm -hmm. and so if you're on that side of the wall, you have to be through traffic. You have no option. <coughs> if you're on this side of the wall, then you have the option to get off at. Uh, 130 or wherever you're getting off. So the concrete wall defines it for us. We don't have to actually think up the definition. It's okay. the concrete wall okay. says you're going through, you can't get off here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. That, that, that data point is actually flawed because that, that would say it has to be, for that data point to be valid, it has to be an if or then analysis. If you go right, then you have to exit. That is not the case. You can ride. Correct. Local all the way through. So I think it's the usage. It's yeah. just showing usage. More so people are on the through than are on the local. Local traffic Correct. on right side of barrier equals Correct. local these, traffic. Yeah. And these that's not these counts here, these percentage here are using streetlight data, which counts 
as cell phone movements and other personal devices. So what this does is it says, where does that car go to? Where does it get off the highway? So these are not based on where the boundaries are, where the, where the concrete is. These counts are based on streetlight data, which is based on moving devices. Probably a 5% difference from the real world, but because some people leave their phone at home, switch their phone off or whatever, so there's probably about a 5% difference from the real world. But that's what the streetlight data tells us. We're waiting to see what happens if, if we get cameras that will actually count uh, traffic counts at various points along here. But at the moment, VDOT doesn't have them, and this road isn't built yet. So when that's built, I'm hoping and praying I can convince VDOT to put some counterpoints here so we can find that out. Because <clears throat> it will have an impact on local businesses along the route. It will have an impact on how many cars we need to get off on, say, Route 3, or if we need to build another access point, et cetera. I, I thought this was going to be a quick throwaway one. You know, it's got nothing to do with bikes. It was meant to be just a quick slide. Next one. Train stations. Um, the train station upgrades are coming. We had an interesting thing in our – oh, it wasn't one of our committees. I did a presentation for Rotary. And one of these guys who paddles up and down the river said to me at the end of the presentation, that bridge is collapsing. I tell everybody not to ride the train anymore because it's dangerous. So I thought, it's probably exaggerating, but I better tell someone. So I got a hold of DRPT, Department of Rail and Public Transportation, VRE that runs the thing, and I said, hey, when last did anybody do an inspection of this bridge because people are complaining that it doesn't look healthy? So they sent somebody out who inspected, and one day we got a knock on the door here, and this engineer from CSX said, hey, I'm from CSX. Your station is falling apart, and there's a problem. I said, it's not my station. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's a broken pipe, water pipe, that is spurting water onto one of the concrete arches, and it's been doing this for God knows how many years, and it's eaten into the concrete uh, archway, and so there's a problem here at the station as well. Anyway, the end result of all of that is the RPT's plan to upgrade the station, which is starting this summer, is going, to include, is going to include fixing that, and CSX is going to go and fix what's wrong with the bridge. So, Can I just ask one question? Maybe it's logical or everyone's taking the same thing I am, but how is it that a feature, major infrastructure like that is able to sit so long and it takes somebody happen to go under passively lame and saying, look, that looks horrible, to get an engineer to come look at it. I mean, is there a regular inspection schedule? Yes. Or should there be? I would think there would be. Uh, so my understanding is that there is a regular schedule, but because we specifically complained, they, out of sequence, sent someone and said, hey, you better go and have a look. What is it, like 10 years, don't, perhaps? Or? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Because it seems like this would have probably been bad last year already. But look, the plan to, to renovate the station has been coming a long time, and they are aware of some of it, including the bridges over the over Princess Anne Street and what's the street this side? I forget the name. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. no, the one yeah. Sure. Anyway, oh, sure. yeah. yeah. Those bridges were intended to be repaired anyway, and extending the platforms and all the other stuff. So now we just added to their work by saying, by the way, people are complaining and they agree. There's some. Not major, but there are some things to worry about. Yeah, well, uh, while we're on the uh, the station here, this this group uh, that that you're talking to has been um, mightily arguing for um, for uh, b bicycle parking at the train station. Yeah. Can can you make sure that that's put into their planning there? So they're not going to do it because DRPT and VRE do not own the station. They only own the platforms. So, and CSX doesn't own the station either. They own the platforms. It's complicated. Yeah. The portion that they own, they're upgrading. I think we've always been told it's very complicated. You, you, you've got to cut, draw lines through the infrastructure and and the central portion is currently owned by CSX. Half of it is being transferred to the Virginia Passenger Rail Authority slash 
Department of Rail and Public Transportation, the half that we the side that we're sitting on. The other side's gonna remain with CSX. The old station, which is in a restaurant, is privately owned land now. The new station structure, technically owned by the city on this particular station. You'll have to ask the gentleman from Spotsylvania to tell you about who owns the station there. I can't tell you. But it's complicated. Okay. I have a quick question. Oh, yes. How hard would it be to create a master agreement between everyone who owns that? <laughs> well, there is a new agreement for the third track and the upgrade and the building of the new Long Bridge and the upgrading of all the stations between the state of Virginia and CSX. Okay. The four billion dollar deal. However, there isn't, I don't believe, a contractual relationship between the localities and the RPT about the maintenance and upgrade of the stations. There is for the use and occupation and <coughs> pays for structural upgrades. And there's a deal that localities are responsible for a percentage and DLPT slash VRE are responsible for a percentage. There's, there's a deal. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you all the details. Okay, so there isn't quite a total encompassing master agreement. Uh, well, the localities, in order to have VRE, have to sign an agreement with. It's complicated. I can give you all the details, but I don't want to delay it too much. There is a contract. It does not say that you have to upgrade or renovate your stations. So that part is not required. It's up to each locality to do. The Chamber of Commerce, this is just something I wanted to make you aware of. The Fredericksburg Regional Chamber of Commerce have decided on their legislative priorities for this year. And one of those affects transportation and potentially us, and that is they want to establish a regional transportation authority. Remember, certain candidates in the last election were campaigning to establish this. Um, Josh Cole proposed uh, creating legislation in the legislature to achieve this and was defeated or didn't go anywhere. The chamber has now taken this issue up, and it's uh, important for us to note because it will raise additional, if, if it ever gets off the ground, it will raise additional taxes to put into transportation projects, which may include bike and pedestrian improvements or not, depending on how the thing is set up. It's just something to note, no, nothing to be done about it right now. Next one. Uh, we have welcomed Becky Golden to a number of our committees, but just to those of you who don't know, Becky Golden is our new Transportation Planning Manager. We have hired a new Public Engagement and Title VI Coordinator who started on Monday. We'll introduce them to you hopefully at the next meeting. And Harry Barber, who facilitates your committee, is now appointed full-time instead of a part-time staff member. Is now with FAMPA full time. Thank goodness. The long range transportation plan will be adopted next month, so we're hoping that you have sent in your comments. The East West study has now gone to phase two, and the consultants have started work on that. This is now slightly delayed. Um, VDOT reminded us that they need to first get a federal approval in place. Uh, on one of the funding streams, so this one is going to be delayed maybe by a month. -ish. I'm saying for the East-West study. Okay, we didn't receive any notification from you on okay. the East-West study, but we did for this one. So, and then um, we're looking at new projects in the future. We're looking at having a freight summit. Economic development is also one of the priorities we have to um, look at in our region, and. We're proposing to have a one-day freight summit to talk to companies that do logistics, that deliver freight, bulk freight, small freight in our region, and try to understand what the problems are that they experience, because often we plan on data points, but we don't actually talk to the people that are affected. So we're going to organize a freight summit 
Um, Jordan is heading up that initiative, and we may use a consultant briefly as well. But it's a one-day summit to try to talk to the economic development folks and the freight companies themselves. What are your um, experiences? What are the good? What are the bad? And then produce a report to say this is what the good is, this is what the bad is, and this is what we think we should be investigating further so that we have kind of more first-hand knowledge than just data points on a map, but we've actually spoken to people. So we're planning to do that in the second half of this year uh, in the fall. And can I ask, ask about that? Is that um, uh, including all freight modes, rail, road, yes. air, every, every, everything that deals with yes, we don't. freight moving around the region? Yes, we don't have much control over aircraft at FAMPA, but certainly access to the airport. So the road to the airport would we would have something to say over, but we don't have we don't particularly plan air travel. We plan access to airports and and air freight uh, facilities. And how about rail? And rail, yes. Okay. We will invite we'll invite CSX to attend. Mm -hmm. We might we might go oh, okay. go cap in hand and ask to yeah. use your lovely facility for the mm -hmm. for the meeting. Yeah, the auditorium. The auditorium. <laughs> Good timing with the Amazon warehouses coming in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's uh, we've designed it on purpose. The staff at FAMPO have designed it on purpose because we think that all of those new warehouses are going to push extra traffic onto the I-95 again and onto Centerboard Parkway. And we've heard comments that the freight rail is difficult to access and some problems with that. So we want to hear what are these problems. And are they real? And what does it look like? There's also the concern in the city of Fredericksburg that some chemicals are stored in containers on the rail line mm. for long periods, and that people live in houses close to those chemicals. And is that a hazard or not? No, I don't know. I'm not a. But you know, those are the kinds of things we want to try and unpack to find out, and then we can put measures in place to deal with in the future. Uh, this is taking too long. I'm eating up your meeting time. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have practically a brand new UPWP with all these new tasks. Uh, well, those are all in UPWP except the freight study. Right, right. And it's not even a study, it's a summit. But that UPWP we're summit. drafting now for, right. for the new year. So the FY23 UPWP will start on the 1st of July. So Becky is drafting it for us kindly. Yes. And she's putting that new project in there, so it will definitely be in the UPWP. And we just amended the UPWP for the studies, the two studies. Right. So it's all, our documents are all up to date with regard to the current studies. It's just that extra one, second half of the year, which will go into the FY23 one. So I think we're good there. Um, what is the future vision for FAMPA? So I'm asking this question of all of our committees, and I would like to hear your thoughts, not necessarily right now, but um, we have got, you know, a mission statement and a bylaws and all that kind of thing, but what are we trying to achieve? What's the goal? And often the goal is described as the good future we would like to see. So what is the good future you would like to see? If we really succeed as FAMPA, what will it look like? Are we allowed to answer this stuff? Uh, you, you may, but I don't want to start an entire workshop. I'm in the hands of the chairman, but but I want you to think about this and to give me your responses. Maybe you can email me or at the next meeting we could have a 10-minute debate as you like. But I want you to think about this question. What would the future look like if we succeeded? Because if we all start to gel at least a common understanding of what the goal is, then we can design the programs to get there. But often planning like this can descend into a fight about the money. Who gets the most money for their territory? That's not necessarily a good metric to use to decide on what the future needs to look like. If we can describe what the future needs to look like, then I can and the staff can and you all can direct each other so that we get towards that goal. And then we can line the money up with what that future needs to look like. When was the last time Sampo did a strategic plan? And pardon my ignorance for not knowing. So FAMPA doesn't actually yeah. do a strategic yeah, plan. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is to introduce kind of a vision statement, which doesn't have to be a 64-page document with four consultants. And a, I'm thinking about 
five pages. That's all. If it can't say it in five pages, you can't say it in 500 pages because you don't know and you're just looking. This five pages that say this is what we're trying to achieve. We want to have good freight movements or we want to have better in, a better environment, right? And what does that look like? Well, one page. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking of. It's trying to develop a, a five pager that says what we're trying to achieve, and then I can refer to that when I say, hey, why don't we put more money into X, whatever it is. Next slide. So what I did with the policy committee is to say, and give me one thing that you think um, you'd like to see in our region in the future, a transportation-related thing, and each of them gave me one sentence. And hopefully we'll have them in the minutes so that you can look at, but I've taken the names off so we don't <coughs> you know, embarrass any particular individual. But think about that. What is it that you would like to see in the region? A lot of people will talk about the I-95 traffic. A lot of people will talk about the trains that are slow and the buses that are, what, what do they normally say, Jamie? I don't know. Whatever. So On time performance. <laughs> what is it you want to see? Do you want to see the buses on time, or do you want to see them more frequent, or do you want to see them come to your neighborhood, or what is it, right? What do you want to see from the trains? What do you want to see from freight? What do you want to see from traffic? What do you want to see about the environment, the bikes and the pedestrian situation? We have Can people... that now? What? Can you answer that now? Uh, Two, three, nine... Six. Yeah, I, Chairman's controlling this meeting, and I've overstayed my welcome, so I, I am going to be in his hands. I personally, I think it's a great idea to um, for each of us to just kind of take this back and think about it a little bit, maybe formulate your answers a little more, and then shoot an email to Ian. There you we go. can certainly uh, cover it briefly at the next meeting, too, if needed. It's, it's entirely up to you how you want to deal with it. Please do email me and give me any thoughts you have. Short is better because I'm trying to get total five pages with all of our thoughts. So like these three points are the things that we should focus on. That's a short email like that, then I know what you think, then I can include that in the in the plan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm done. And is it okay if um, those of us who are outliers, we we don't live in the FAMPO region, can still answer the yeah. question? I'm while this FAMPO looks after three jurisdictions, but I have to wear two hats. For the George Washington Regional Commission, I also have to do rural transportation planning. So the two gentlemen over there who are asking that question just now, we're meeting with them and Carrie's facilitating that to ask them what projects they need in their area. Yeah. So it's going to affect them as well. Yeah. So please please feel free to, to share those points and then I'll give them to Carrie and she can hopefully put them in the rural transportation plan for next year. So that's the, uh, yeah, we're actually having a meeting of our uh, uh, trails uh, group in a couple weeks. I may make this an agenda item. Sure. But that yeah, please. I'm done. Can I go? Yes. Thank you. Have a good night. Fun to sneak out. Oh, I'm not. What's the time? I'm going to be going by. All right. All right. Next up is public comment. Is there anyone here? Uh, <laughs> in person or online from the public that would like to speak this time. No, did we get any written? We oh. did not. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to discussion items, approval of the 2050 Active Transportation Plan draft, Ms. Barber. If you could, um, so you get to down, down very far until we get to the new map, because they haven't seen yet. Okay. So folks, you've seen this? bunch of times. Um, you've had a chance to review it. Keep going. Uh, the only new thing in it, I did add three needs maps. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions before we decide whether or not to pass that on to the policy committee? I have one question. What happens next once this document How does it go into, uh, into motion? Well, one thing, it is the support document for all of the funding that the various localities try to try to go after. Um, if it is in the long range transportation plan, that's a that's much better in, in trying out for smart scale or transportation or anything like that. 
Um, so it's supposed to be basically the guiding document of the region for transportation. Great. Yes. Question. Um, on, as a side note, something I had mentioned in this last sample's uh, EVAC meeting, um, how do we assist in implementing better security measures like uh, to keep these trailways, these transportation pathways, uh, the construction that's, that's uh, being built, the, the I-95 and pedestrian walkways, what is a way that we can keep it all interconnected and add extra security through, um, I, I don't know, any means, maybe technology or whatever? On a side note, I don't know how I make this with that. But maybe there's something that can be done to make this more secure or safe. I like it. I mean, I love it. So I just wanted to add that that's something, a component that I'd like to add to that later. Okay. You want to talk more about the security of the various modes because they they would require different kinds of security, right? Well, we'll we'll, we'll go to all that. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, so this is one of the new maps, uh, Fredericksburg Active Transportation Needs. These are both needs that are made it into the CLRD and did not. Um, so they're just generally what Fredericksburg thinks it needs. Um, so that's Fredericksburg. There's scroll down to the next one. And while the official comment period has ended, these maps were made in response to comments, so you haven't had a full three days. So if you find an error, you'll be found. So that's not only in the path, right? They're in the path, yes. Yes. But but they were made after the last meeting. So just uh, send me any comments you have on those. And I'm go ahead. Um, the, <clears throat> the trail uh, section that we ended up drawing and adding to the map layer three meetings ago now, that goes that extends from Mountain View Road uh, across Shelton Shop Road and then through the, all these new pop-up subdivisions and stuff. I was finally able to track down, <clears throat> track down where that one popped up. Mm -hmm. It was from the 2000, it, it was Proposed as the Dominion Power Trail or Dominion Trail system. It was put into the uh, Park uh, 2009 Park Bond referendum that was supposed to be voted and approved. That's where it, it took me a while to track down that information, but um, I guess it was a proposed part or proposed and approved at one time, or supposed to be getting funding added towards it. But then it just right. Is this something? And we we revisited that with okay. our 2019 bike pet plan. Okay. So um, really, we just saw it as a good opportunity to potentially connect a lot of public facilities mm -hmm. and neighborhoods. Um, something that would be, you know, off off the roadway. So. That, I was just bringing up because when we were discussing this back to the Stafford section of it, uh, we didn't know where that. The, the line um, in the shape file came from and, and what the trail was called or a question was asked about it. So that's why I was trying to find it just in case. Um, I also was able to put in, uh, incorporate the comments that I received during the time period. So um, Aaron gave them all a lot of good comments. Uh, Jacob gave good comments. A lot of folks gave really good comments to get better. Um, so, is there any more discussion or questions? I, I just have, yep. I sent the email to just a real quick thing on a typo issue on page yes. A2, okay? A2Z. Two those, or, uh, an A34 refers to a regional greenway study as shown in the map below, and I didn't see the map below. Yeah, that's, that's a big typo. So we'll see. <laughs> that's a, right, that one. So I don't know how that got through all of this. <laughs> right. Got it now. <laughs> I've got it now, and I will. The fight. amazing thing about QCing. So no, we're good. I'm good. Any other comments? Yeah, I already sent mine to Carrie, and it was some of them were very administrative, like be consistent with CLRTP or LRTP, spell buses with one S, or you know, spelled with two S's and one S throughout the document. 
um, you know, just make sure the fonts and spacing match because those were a little bit off. But she has those, and then okay. um, apparently I was a little bit late with comments. So <laughs> a bunch of them she said she'd consider for the next update or amendment to the, to the plan. Yeah, I just want to say kudos to Carrie and team for putting this together. It's, it's a heavy lift, and uh, I had mentioned the maps last time. Glad you were able to work those in there. Look good. Great. Thank you. So we have an action item on that if you. All right. Um, is there a motion to approve the 2050 Active Transportation Plan? Uh, so moved. Yeah. Second? Second, Jamie Jackson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good. All right. Um, next is this is just a link to the full LRTP. Um, I want to make sure that you had had a chance to review that as well. And I mistakenly did not put this as an action plan, but we would like to get your endorsement so we can pass that along to the policy committee on this document. All right. Has anyone had a chance to review or have comments? All right. Is there a motion to endorse? Thank you. Second? I second it. That was great. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Takes care of that one. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving along to the FAMPO Bike and Ped Counter Program. So this is one we sort of talked about last time, and hopefully we've had a chance to think about this a little bit. Um, what next, basically? Next slide. So these are all of our historic counter locations where we have traditionally put the counter. Uh, we did have two counters, which made it easier, but now we only have one. Um, go ahead to the next slide. So these are the registered locations right around the map. And location. Now, just because we've put it in these places before doesn't mean we have to return to them. Next slide. That's not actively counting, those are just places that we've placed it at times. Yeah, we have placed it for two weeks at a time. The only place that it's been actively counting for a year and we just took it down was the um, canal. So my question for all of you is where should we put it? Looks like there are several locations on the VCR trail. Yeah. Okay. The long trail. What about the segments um, out west? Okay, yeah, I see it on there. Too. Yeah, we have it in Bossy. Counter has to be on the trail, or can it be on a street that's being considered for like a bicycle pole? The tricky thing about that, that would be a good use for it, except that when it's close to a street, it picks up cars. Okay, so it really has to be on separated. It can be, path. like, you can put it, if you can get it off the road enough, it can be where a desire line is. You know, one of the trails in the grass that people have been walking so much. Um, I've often thought that would be a good use. Like, if you're considering putting some infrastructure there, getting a count would support that. I think maybe. I know those desire lines along Lafayette um, are really well trodden, and the city wants ultimately to run a multi-use path and sidewalk system up and down Lafayette. So, kind of a cool non-tradition. That's a possibility. We are there. Um, sidewalk and shared use path is planned in, for Lafayette in different places. The problem is right away. What we wanted to do originally when we were studying it was to put a shared use path the entire west side down. There's not enough right away. Um, so that, but that would be a potential place. It's 
Like, I can talk more about All right, yeah, we'll offline. Talk about it. It's a whole thing. Um, one additional because I think they provide an interesting data point is on the Chatham Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, so it looked like there was a counter up at Pratt Park, and maybe we could see how many people are making that connection from the park downtown if there's a location. Is there a counter at Pratt Park? I'm not certain. I thought I saw one on, on one of these maps. Oh, oh, I thought you meant oh, oh, currently. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. So maybe putting it at that end of Chatham Bridge. Yeah. Beyond there, because mm -hmm. there's certainly infrastructure connecting that. So that's a potential. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to put one uh, at the end of the city property heading towards Moss as we work with the county of Pennsylvania to connect Moss and the quarry to see what kind of traffic is physically going from the city of Fredericksburg land through Spotsbury County land and, of course, to Moss with the end goal to get from Dixon Park to Moss. Kind of falls into you know that statistic, but I know we've had problems with the, the broken counters on the trails. That's yeah. unfortunately you know, what's happened to the quarry trails. Uh, it's vandalized. So I'll throw that out there as, a, as an example and option, but uh, I think it'd be something that would be a good statistic for sure. That would be a good suggestion. These are these would so we have three potentials. Actually, on Lafayette, are you thinking anywhere? Just where you see the really well beaten down. Uh, pathways where people have been walking, like maybe up near the Dollar General. Um, okay. Yeah, we'd have to check and see how many potential sites that would encompass. Are there other localities or agencies that are counting bike and pets? So You mean localities like the people sitting around here, the okay, city so or the our county levels or um, even the MPS or something? anybody has Just a counter. Okay. Um, the state, this the right. dot is going to bring a counter into this area and they're trying to decide where to put it. And that's yeah. something else we can all talk about. They want to put a permanent counter that doesn't move um, and they're trying to decide where to put it. So I, he just, uh, John just talked to me, emailed me the other day about it. He's so, excited. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. The three bicycle counter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, he would like feedback on where to put that as well. Can you repeat again? I wasn't listening. Do sidewalks qualify as? Uh, can you can you do a counter on a sidewalk? Sidewalks are difficult because they're too close to the cars. It depends on the okay. placement. So it has to be like a wide sidewalk or one that's more separated from mm -hmm. traffic. So this counter like typically mounted to a tree or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we mount it to road signs. Road signs, okay. Yeah. Like any kind of little like any kind of little sign. It's got a it's got kind of like a wire that you can wrap around and uh, to the box. Gotcha. So any sign will do. What do you all think generally about this idea of placing it not on current trails but on potential trails for a while? Seems like it would be a really good way for you to justify a need because mm -hmm. often yeah. what we're talking about is health and safety, right? Like how do we get folks from point A to point B? They're already using it, to your point. Um, so yeah, I just I'm not I at all. Only, I'm only thing there is a lot of times those are just like worn pathways along the road, right? Yeah. But you don't want the interference of the traffic either. So there could be a proximity concern with some. So you would have to find something that's far enough away from the road that would just pick up, so we could find something to put it on. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to scout out the potential locations and see if there's something over here that's far enough that it wouldn't catch the cars, but it would catch the people right here. Yeah. Is there anything that's in current planning right now that has sort of a, a social path on it that the numbers could help you with doing the grant applications or anything like that? Great. Um, probably. I have to think through everything, but I'm sure. just thinking. You know, where's the bang for the buck? We have putting the effort out there. Planned trail, so yes, that's that's a. Good consideration. A whole bunch of people raise their hand at once. I think Craig. Sorry, is, I don't know what the counter looks like, but oh, it's, not, it's a box about this big, about that wide. Can you not put the back of it towards the road? Like if the sign was right on the edge of the road, oh, yeah. the back facing the road, then we get the trail. Yes. Okay. You win the prize for the smart. <laughs> 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 Uh, Carrie, it would be um, it would it'd be interesting to be able to count the um, the riders on Route Three East 
There are a good number of bike routes. Yeah, on the roadway? Well, uh, people ride, 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 ride on the edge of the road, ride on the right. shoulder. I don't know if but it's possible to even to do that. That would definitely be picking counter. up cars, though, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, that would be a truck. We we would love to have a counter on our um, on our Dalton Railroad Trail. Um, that that would be great. We've, we've never been able to count anything out there. Do permits help you figure out who's trail users? Like how many trail users? Well, it involves a counter. And um, with, um, yeah, with National Park, it does help us get a counter somehow or another. I guess, I guess we could ask our... There actually is a new superintendent of the Stone Garrett's Trail coming. So I think the permit issue is you can fill out a permit once you can as many or a few times as you want. So I didn't actually, realize that. Yeah, so it doesn't actually give you a number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Jim, we can talk separately. So I mean the last my last point on that page was that we definitely need more counters. We have to find the money to get them. Um, I'm kind of looking into that and researching it. I like I hear, oh yeah, there's money for counters. Where? What is it? Yeah. So I'm looking into it. Um, but yes, all right, so we have three that we could start out with. I would like you guys to get back to me on email with some more locations, um, pre preferably on places that a trail might be, might be planned, if you could get enough backup justification for it. Does that make sense? Did I hear you move them every two weeks? When we had two, all of this data is based on revolving two of them around every two weeks. We have not done that since 2019. Have you given thought to counting certain locations at particular times of the year? You can count the wrong two weeks and of the busiest. Oh, so the way we did it, we did it two weeks at one time of the year, and then like six months later, it would come back for two weeks again. So you'd at least get like summer summer, winter kind of thing, or fall, spring. A blizzard and a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, but, I get you know. it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's what I'd like you to do. Um, and I will badger you all until we get a good selection of sites that we can start. How much are these counters, Carrie? How much are they cost? They're about five to 7000 We've had this discussion, and they are that they are costly. They are costly, and then if somebody like knocks it off the tree, then we lose one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. So that's all I got on that. Thank you. All right, smart scale updates. All right. We're in round five. Um, our round five timeline, we're right here in, actually not in February anymore, we're now in March. Uh, Pre-application window has just opened, so they are going to get their application started. <coughs> um, and then April 1st, that part is finished, pre-application is finished, and that will screen the, the pre-application. The final application period starts, and August 1st is the deadline. Next slide. Our preliminary list, um, both of the agencies here can submit five pre-applications. So FAMPO has the VCR regional project, 95 widening. Actually, I won't go through all these because they've each got their own slide. But the point about this slide is there are five pre-applications. One is going to have to come off of each of these lists. We can only have four full applications. So that is a job for our technical advisory committee. Uh, Carrie. Yes. Um, being um, uh, 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 King George County, uh, note the absence of the uh, We not have any applications, or none of our applications made the cut. None of them were like regionally significant, but also you didn't. It usually, um, hang on, let me back up. They have their own slots to use, and if they don't use them all up, then they don't need one of ours. Ah, okay. And they didn't use them all up. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I believe I was aware of that. So good. Okay. Great. Thanks for that clarification. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. All right. So our first one is US One Lay Hill intersection in Stafford. Um, basically, there's going to be some new sidewalks and access management improvements. This was also submitted in the last last round. Yes. Yeah, 
I'm going to do it again. Next. Centerport Parkway. Um, this, so VDOT is doing pipeline studies for us, and we don't know much about this yet because it's currently in, in the study, and when the consultant figures out what's best, gives us recommendations, they're going to package them up in potential projects, and we're all waiting on the edge of our seat for that. <laughs> There, there are Metro Quest surveys that are active right now for all five of the pipeline projects. Are there? Okay. There are. Okay. Well, let me look for the uh, yeah, web know. address. Yeah. Is this um, uh, um, uh, uh, pipeline is or 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 no, or it's a like gas pipeline it's like or a pipeline that moves projects quickly. Got, got okay. The idea is that these these are very fast moving studies and they will develop projects that are made for smart scale. So it's kind of a yeah. smart scale kind of Thank you for that clarification. And I did not I didn't come up with the name. <laughs> so Warrington Road in Southern Stafford is a new set of sidewalk here from Old Forge to Solomon Drive. This is just to the east of I ninety five. And apparently, Brian, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic there. There is, yeah. They go yeah. all the way under 95. The board just approved a uh, rezoning to the urban development district for a large tract on the north side right there. So we could see a lot more pedestrians in the not so distant future. We still have a sidewalk. Yeah. Next. We hope anyway. That sidewalk on the south side is 17. Hmm? That sidewalk on the south side is 17. Yes. Uh, that's also the north side. So the next one is in Fredericksburg, widening of Dixon Street coming out of the city between Gilles Salisbury and Mayfield. There's going to be a shared use path here, which connects to the funded shared use path that's going to be built here. So we'll have a nice shared use path coming out of the city, um, which is part of the East Coast Greenway and will link up to uh, pathways that Spalsvania is working on. Next slide. All right, Lafayette Boulevard roadway. So basically we have a sidewalk on the east side. There's already a funded piece of sidewalk here in the middle, and then another new piece of sidewalk. And these are all on the east side. And there's going to be a new bus shelter and bus stop at Wellington Woods so that there will be a pair of bus stops. Oh, and some turn lane improvements at Old Greenwich Drive. Sorry, I missed that part. Next. It's a VCR regional project. So Fredericksburg, maybe you guys have seen that Fredericksburg is planning this new bankside trail that's going to go along the river. It's going to be lovely. Um, so this part of the bankside trail, the Lafayette Boulevard connector, which connects to the existing VCR trail, so we can connect these two things. Um, this part right here is where there are going to be roundabouts, and so that's already taken care of in another project. And then we have a VCR trail extension. Right now it ends just before the Hazel Run, Great Hazel Run, which will have a bridge. Um, and then this extends to 95, where we have to deal with the big behemoth problem that we are working on in the study. We have a study for that. <laughs> Next slide. <clears throat> and this one, widening of I-95 to eight lanes between exit 130 and exit 126. Next slide. This one, Route 3, Gordon Road to I-95. This is another pipeline study. So VDOT is working with a consultant, VDH, on these pipeline studies. VDH. VDH. Yeah, thank you. B. Sorry, letters. Um, All right. And EPR is a sub for the communications. Hmm? EPR is the sub for the communications. OK. Um, <clears throat> So they are currently, I went to one of their meetings and they've got several ideas for recommendations for safety um, and they're going to put them all together into different packages of projects that we can submit for smart scale. And again, we're just waiting for that to press. I went ahead and sent you the link and Ian, if you can distribute it to the group, that'd be great. The okay. surveys are open until March 14th. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll do that. Thank you. Next slide. This, likewise, is another one of these pipeline studies. So this is for Route 1 coming out of the city. Um, it's basically going to focus on safety needs and bike, bike pedestrian needs coming out of the city. 
and we are anxiously waiting for the results from that. Next slide. This one is US-1 Mass Planet Corridor. There are several things in this. They've changed a little bit over time, but basically we have a shared use path down Route 1 um, and several turn lane improvements and a new, I believe, a new shared use path to get to the high school. Oh, there it is, River Run Parkway. Yep, right there. Next slide. All right, so almost all of those had bike ped components, which is excellent thinking about rounds in years past when that wasn't the case. So that's a great improvement. Um, but only five, sorry, five free applications are allowed and only four full ones. So we will have to see which four on each side make the cut. Um, there's not an action item for you guys. It's going to be for policy committee. All right. Who, who composes TAC, the TAC? So some of the folks in this room compose the TAC. Um, it's planners. Basic, it's basically the, like the subject matter experts from the, the whole of region. So not elected officials, more like staff members staff. of the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you want to go on our website, you can see the whole list of people. <clears throat> What would be the criteria for for prioritizing, Carrie? Well, that's something we're working on, and they will ultimately have, like, they will work with us, but they will ultimately have a, a say on that. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It may be that one of them gets screened out, and we don't have to, we don't even have to worry about it. Like, VDOT may decide that one of the projects isn't ready to move forward, and so they screen it out, and then that will take our decision away from us. Hey, Terry, just to uh, establish kind of expectations, too, so if some of these projects are awarded, at what point would the public be able to see, like, they're actually going to hit the ground and you see construction? It's not immediate. Uh, that's just saying that. It's, it's, six, it's, it's years out. Eight, that's what I'm years. trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, you, if, yeah. Even if it's coming, it's going to be a few years. Mm -hmm. A, yeah. yeah. A funded project in Smart Scale goes into the VDOT six year improvement program, so the fastest anything would happen. I think Brown Five would start he and might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, I left Pinky Lasso <laughs> would be like twenty twenty six. So we're looking pretty far out. Yeah, that's right. You had your hand raised. I, I couldn't help but notice that the V C R extension through ninety five lines up with where they want to maybe extend uh, to eight lanes. I'm sure you guys looked at the possibility. Well, the concept, that through well, here's the thing. The original concept for a project was widen eight lanes and while you're at it, build a tunnel. But that's, unfortunately, it's too large a project to be considered for smart scale. It has to be broken up. It's too okay. expensive. Okay. It's way too much money. Smart scale projects like around three to five million do really well. When you start getting to 200 million, <laughs> that, those have not historically been chosen. <clears throat> hey, uh, 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 Carrie, it indicates that one uh, one uh, project has to come off a of beach list. Is is the option open to take uh, two projects off of one of the lists? If no, because this each, works that way. Each entity that's putting forth projects can only have four projects. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would say that we were talked about like the timeline for Smart Scale Round Five, but Smart Scale Round Five had some really good bike pad improvements coming with it. So there are some things coming, mm -hmm. um, and this builds on that, just like the connection with the city at Tidewater Trail, because our Smart Scale Round Five took it from the city line out to Shannon Airport, but that that East Coast Greenway extension, and, and it would be great to do in tight transformative corridors all at once and say we we did it, but it's just not the reality of the funding. It's just, we don't, they're, they're not $100 million pots easily like that. Right. So it's piece at a time. Next slide. <clears throat> oh yeah, so this is just the timeline for Smart Scale. Um, just showing you it's a biennial process. It really does take us two years to deal with it and then it's time for the next one. Um, and that's pretty much it. Do I have any questions or anything? Good job. Those are, those actually look like really good projects. Yeah, I think they're good projects. No. 
So wish them luck. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Correspondence. Um, there. there is no course. Okay, staff report. My staff report. The only thing that I was going to mention is that we do have some folks for the meeting now, so I'm going to send letters to their localities and or organizations. Okay. And uh, for member reports, um, I'll just run down the list here. Um, for Stafford, I don't have a whole lot to report other than we are wrapping up our study, multimodal study for Route 17, um, corridor near 95. Uh, recommendations of that study should be coming out sometime this month. And we just had a, a kickoff meeting with a consultant on uh, revisiting our transportation impact fees. Mm -hmm. um, that just happened last week, so uh, we'll be focusing on, on that. It's going to require a lot of data collection and coordinating with them on our, our comp plan projections and whatnot. Um, and that was it for Stafford. Uh, friends of the Rappahannock? Um, nothing really relevant to BPAC at this time. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. All right. Uh, King George? Meeting with Carrie next week on our rural work plan. Um, got some bike path projects we're going to hopefully wrap into that, but otherwise nothing else. Cool. Okay. Looking forward to it. All right, City of Fredericksburg. Bossy. Uh, just one thing for myself, I've been particularly involved with the bike head portion of that Route 1 whole river study that you've been you just heard about um, as it relates to Spotsylvania County. And as a long range planner, that's kind of my focus. Um, I'm not only looking at that Route 1 corridor, I'm looking and tying it into Lafayette Boulevard coming in uh, from the uh, east and connecting it into Route 1 and then carrying bike pad accommodation to the VCR trail, as well as our VCR auxiliary trail down Harrison Road. So it's a bigger picture. We're trying to knit it all together as part of the study. So we're on it. And that's all I got. All right. Did Paul, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did Paul um, share the, the link for where the study is located? Because it's too large to email, but it's on the study website. Okay. Okay, excellent. And it's huge. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Try anything? Thank you. Uh, Caroline, we're working on a transportation update and conference plan that will include the Laysmith bike head, bike head improvements that Carrie worked on for us last fall. Um, hopefully, we'll have that finished up to go to the board in the middle of the summer. Um, and then we also are trying to set a date with Carrie tomorrow. Yeah, I'm waiting so, for, yeah, Mike, for an answer from you guys. Yeah, Mike and I talked about it again today. He said he would talk to give me something tomorrow to okay. meet you next week. So All right. um, we'll be in contact tomorrow. Cool. But we Thank do you. plan on catching up with you next week. All right. All right. Vida. Uh, Carrie stole my thunder already. We're working <laughs> on smart scale and pi pipeline projects and we're going to be reviewing the, work, the draft rural work plans once they're done. Also looking over invoices. I'm doing a lot of bike head on the smart scale project, so I'm going through to see what's there, uh, whether or not there are any exclusions, you know, if they're very rural and the cost would be prohibitive. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far we've had some really great luck with tying them into either existing projects or um, giving the information back to our designers so that they can draw up sketches. I know that um, today at a meeting at like 4 o'clock, I think Stephen Haynes, who's my boss, um, said that he's going to be sending out sketches to all the applicants of what we've done to date just to make sure we're all on the same page and we don't get to the you know end of this month and then, you know, King George comes by and goes, what the heck were you thinking? This is not what we explained. <laughs> So, um, you know, those should be going out, if not tomorrow, early next week. Great. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, NPS. A couple of things. Uh, like everybody, we've been doing a lot of storm cleanup. Uh, mm -hmm. Still going, that, that's greatly impacted our trails. And um, so that's still ongoing. Uh, as is the Lafayette and Lee Drive connection, you know, just north, or actually south, 
south as you're coming down the hill uh, of this traffic surplus there. There's the pedestrian crossing. The landing that's on the Park Service side was going to be what's known as rainbow turf, which is a rubberized turf, um, mm -hmm. knowing just the level of secondary wash that we get in that area that'll help keep that going. Um, so safe landing spot for folks once they get there and, and actually make a little note that's where, uh, if folks didn't know, 2027 is a century of the National Park. Oh, wow. And uh, the monument to that is there uh, at the head of the line. That's coming down the line. Um, Route 3, VDOT is about to clean off the section. There's a little pull-off for right across from Old Salem Church. There's this sort of orphaned statue that's over there as you're headed out of town. And there's been a little pull off there forever. They're looking to widen the road and to make it a through path. And so we've been working with them to, to make it possible. And so that's gonna be a changeover. And then finally, the park has been working on a strategic plan. It's basically the five-year vision for us, uh, where we are today, what our opportunities are, and then where we want to be in five years when we hit our century mark. And one of the main themes that came out is visitor experience, and the way that we described that was circulation. How are people getting from site to site? When the park was envisioned even 20 years ago, it was so different. You could get from Fredericksburg to Chancellorsville, the spots of eight. Yeah, you could get out and see everything, and traffic today is, makes that less of a likelihood. Um, and so looking at visitor experience overall is one of the things that we want to do in the park. That will include also our uh, comprehensive trail plan. The park is what we're hoping. So as soon as that strategic plan, um, or at least the executive summary of that is ready to go, I'll bring copies of it here for, for everybody to have. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. DRC. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, um, a couple items. Last um, At the last meeting, I reported that a, um, a bill had been introduced in in the Virginia legislature to acquire a piece of property to add to Caledon, a piece of property known as Lake Caledon, um, a 450-acre uh, piece. Um, that, that, um, that acquisition didn't make it through, um, through the committee. Another uh, um, Another bill that was introduced to evaluate the um, the feasibility of the Dog and Railroad Trail directly becoming a part of Caledon um, has made it through and uh, was approved in the House budget. So, so we're really um, so we're so we're really real in, we're real encouraged about that. Um, Delegate Luke Torian from Prince William was the one that introduced it. Um, so, so, so we're real hopeful that it'll um, it'll make it all the way through. Um, I reported last last year this it, yeah, a little bit interesting. Uh, at the last meeting, I reported that, that that because of the snowstorm, which which really took hundreds of trees on the trail down, that that that, that we needed still needed some help in getting the getting the uh, the uh, uh, trail. Uh, the, uh, 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 cleared. I, I think it was the day after our meeting that 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 we did get the last tree off the trail. So, uh, so that was really encouraging. Um, like to uh, call out uh, people that came out to help. Um, um, some um, employees from the uh, uh, Dalton came out. There's a Military retiree group here in town called RWB, Red, White, and Blue. Yeah, you guys may be aware of them. They they came out um, and and uh, and spent a whole day out there. And not only did they help us hold up the clearing, they brought um, they brought beer. So. so <laughs> Uh, we had our annual half marathon race, winter half marathon race on the trail this last weekend. 
and I like to call that Kirsten. Kirsten ran the race and did just great. Congratulations, wow. Kirsten. And um, Kirsten, I hope, hope <laughs> you don't mind. I, yeah, nothing to shout about. My timing was nothing to shout about. Did but you I, finish? I did finish. Well, did finish and did <laughs> great. And I have to There's no, no sound. No, and I emailed the no. picture that you and I took to Ms. Carey. So. Oh, you did. Oh, you did. oh dear well, God. Exactly. <laughs> I, I just emailed. Okay. Literally, I'm that's the just email. And if it's, it's embargo, if that's it's all. in your email, you may be able to... Uh, May, may be able to um, to call it up on the screen. Um, we won't uh, do that. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's actually a nice picture. Yeah, I think it is. It, I'm in the picture too. Oh. Okay. Um, as far as the Potomac Heritage Trail, it it it, 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 it self goes. Um, the the application uh, has has been out. I think it's closed now for a new a new. <laughs> Superintendent of the trail, um, I know you're aware of this, Kirsten, and so we so we have to hope to have a, a new superintendent in place. Hope, hopefully in a month or two. Knock on wood. One of the things that that that's sort of more um, that, that that we all have to um, have to have to be thinking about, uh, particularly the three jurisdictions that have MOUs. With, National Park Don't Care to Trail. Um, those those have been in place for a good while now, and probably the new the new superintendent is probably a review them seems uh, to determine if they need to be. Um, is that some information that you received from the Park Service already? <clears throat> no, I just look at the I look at the at. At the dates on the old ones, and they have some age on them. So. I, I wouldn't be too worried about that yet. You wouldn't? Okay. I, I hear it from uh, not there. So, very good, Carson. Appreciate it. Um, and the other thing um, is that there, I, 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 I reported last uh, at the last meeting that there uh, was a lot of consternation about um, about uh, federal money for placement for the Harry Nice Bridge across the Potomac River being held up because Maryland, in its infinite wisdom, <clears throat> took the 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 bike ped um, facility off the new bridge, and it was a requirement of a two hundred million dollar grant from the <laughs> Federal Highway and administration. So they they apparently have told Maryland that you're not getting the two hundred million. And so there's a lot of scrambling around, including um trying to come up with some way to repurpose the old bridge, the old paradise bridge, leave it there and make it a a dedicated uh uh bike pit for SAS facility. Um kind of a long shot. But hey, there's um there's a ground ground grassroots um, effort to try and see if we can't make that a reality. Um, we'll see how that goes. So, um, so that's all I have to report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Deborah on the line. Do you see uh, Deborah lately? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, any any updates from you, Deborah? <laughs> That is a note. Audio last time she Can you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. we gotcha. Oh, okay. No, I don't have any updates. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Fred Trails. No updates report. Um uh, CC. I just got after my ride captain. Tomorrow's the only day of the month we don't have a ride planned on our calendar. If you want to ride your bike, go to bikefred.com and join us. Bring your helmet. Okay, thank you. How about any of our citizen reps? So, Comments? Yes. Sorry for missing last month's meeting. Uh, my son went for open heart surgery. And it got moved and we're good. <laughs> but while sitting in the hospital, I was going back through some of Info's uh, social media uh, programs that they were, they were putting out. And, well, it sort of inspired me to start doing some research. It was associated with the bus program, going out and handing out 
bottles of water at the bus station and so showing the sample members riding the bus saying, hey, like, this is good. Here's what we enjoy about it. So I turned our focus to BPAC, and one of the sort of causes that I, I try to push with my company and with the, the Veterans Affairs called Project or it's a Park Rx Org, where local health organizations uh, like Mary Washington Hospital writes a prescription to you and say, hey, for your heart health, here's a prescription for daily activity. You take that prescription, you go to a local, region, state, or national park, and you get free access to the park. Uh, so you don't pay parking facilities, you don't pay usually for activity programs that they need lead. So like they have a hiking program, running program. So it's like, well, let me put a proposal to present to our, our many to show how the work of BPAC connects these registered parks with Park Rx. Well, if you go to parkrx.org, um, we, we're at Blackstone, starting from, ending from Triangle, all the way up to Caldron. I screwed up the pronunciation of it. Caldron. Caledon. Oh, Caledon. 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 Caledon is the closest. And then uh, Lake Yam State Park. No local, region, uh, state, uh, any type of park systems have partnered up uh, with Park RX. Um, so what I was going to propose is it, maybe that's an outreach thing that our organization can sort of reach out to both Mary Washington to have like the top 10 RDF programs in the U.S. Uh, and do a social media campaign like look how, look how we connect these parks with our local healthcare system. One that can also bring in supporters for funding and grant writing and stuff. If, if we say we are leading the state in support for Park RX, or, or there's a there's a way you can spend it for funding as well. But I just wanted to bring up we can highlight all the work and in the shared use passage, uh, paths and trails, how we connect all of these things to get people healthier and active to this national program. National Park Services is they have almost all their self registered. So it's called Healthy Parks, Healthy People. It actually started in Australia. So it's actually a worldwide movement and there's a number of places that have connected uh, with them, but you're right, Mary Washington hasn't done it. I don't know that the park though has really pushed it either. So. That, that, well, none of the parks have, so the parks actually have to go on to parkrx.org uh, and register and be our supporters. Um, and then people go to find the park on the website and they see the local park site. Well, I can go to whatever park locally here in Fredericksburg and I know I can access the park for free, I can participate with my prescription. And they can go to their doctors if they're, we would all have to start to gain get like Mary Washington and other old organizations to, to jump onto it. It costs the doctor nothing other than writing a piece of paper saying, yes, obviously physical activity is good for your health, you should go do it, I'm prescribing you to find it. So I wanted to bring that up just to see if it would be potentially something that our organization would be interested in in starting sort of a campaign or, or reaching out and seeing if Mary Washington will be uh, on board with supporting it and saying, hey, look, we're partnering with BPAC on this and then reaching out to Parks and Recreation, um, the Department for Conservation and Recreation at the state level, or I'm not sure if there's um, but I mean, that's even government islands and some of these other highly accessed areas, yes, there's no fee to go there, but just adding to it and showing some helps to build that connectivity. And then when we do with the Greenway and everything else, we can say we connect all of these. So you, you can go from the new downtown Stafford area when it gets built to government islands safely, we just we can connect you. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so I wanted to add to what you were saying. I, um, what was it, Mr. Stevens? Um, I have spoken with the COO at Mary Washington, um, who's interested in different programs, and he's also, I think, on the board for Fred Bus. So um, I will definitely talk to him about that. Um, so 
something I've been working on is I just met with the Inquiet District uh, recently elected Board of Supervisors and uh, pretty amazing. We talked a lot about different concepts for housing and I see how the housing and transportation um, are intersect and how there will be soon to be um, a coordinated planning plan, transportation and housing coming together for the long range plan. So we talked about that and about um, long term residents who have been here for multiple decades versus new coming residents. Um, and that was something that was a big topical point in the projection plan for the 25 year plan for. Um, so with that said, my concern becomes about security. And so I've contacted the um, Crime Prevention Unit at the Stafford Police Department to talk about how we can create more safety measures around our parks and recreation and by by old pathways and um, basically keeping a close watch on all of the new incomers that both the north and south. And so that's been a big deal, um, topical point for board of supervisors and then also for um, for residents is safety. How do we keep our safety intact in Stafford while um, allowing the influx of people to come in and purchase homes or rent and balancing the rent between housing and balancing the transportation flood of tr truckers versus actual cars and residents and jobs. And so um, with that said, working on that, crime prevention with the staff and supervisor via Harbor and um, yeah, I'm hoping that come to some good in, good consensus, hopefully, and I'll come up come back with some ideas that we need. Thank you. I just this is uh, more so a, a suggestion than a report, so please do what you need to with this. But uh, with warm weather and spring in the air, I'm sure many of you are thinking about paving schedules uh, like I am. So. To the extent it's helpful um, or has already been shared, I am curious uh, to the extent that we are able as a group to look to make sure that restripings can be optimized to the summer schedule. Um, so, um, you know, suggesting either at a future meeting or if it's already been shared, whether the findings of where stripings are uh, available this summer can be shared with this group. Seems like it could be a good conversation. Make sure um, no stones unturned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The city is looking at uh, trying to give that information to the planning commission. Okay. Yeah. We want to add it how it's historically been given so that we can um, make suggestions about complete streets, designs, and whatnot that happens as in conjunction with repaving. So let's talk about that. And, uh, what is your name? Uh, I'm Aaron. Aaron? Yeah, Aaron Brick. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right. I think that was it. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Aye. How you been? Florida in April. Yeah, anybody that wants one of the brochures that hasn't had one in forever.